had a tough reality just hit me the other day, you know? One of my homies that's really close to me and part of CTL Records was, he was killed. Uh, he was shot and, uh, you know, he was just a kid who, who loved music and was always there for me when I asked him, you know what I'm saying? He, he recorded my music, he mixed and mastered my music and just like that, he was taken, man. And that's the reality of the streets, man, you know? That could have easily been me. Hands down, that, that could have been anybody, anybody in my camp, you know? Everybody's, everybody was in the streets, but everybody's trying to make a change now. So now I'm focused 100%. I'm focused on my music. The streets is in my rear view and music is right here. Well, as a single mom, I did the best I could with him. He was a very mischievous kid, very mischievous. He was uh, always out and about with friends, hardly ever home. Well, till maybe six o'clock, then he had to come in. But at home even, he was so mischievous, pulling pranks and whatnot, very, very, mischievous and um, when he was a kid he just to prove how mischievous he was he used to walk around on his tiptoes you know just I don't know why but he he was always walking around on his tiptoes as if he was like a cat you know ready to pounce on something you know what I mean so he was a mischievous kid so this right here this is the neighborhood which I grew up in from a little kid to now. So right now we're on Alexander Street in the central area of the city. We call it CTL and yeah man, right here is the house I grew up in, you know, from when I was a little baby, one years old, until I was 24 years old. So check it out man, let y'all know this is how I grew up. started for me man this is this is what molded me this is the area that molded me and made me the individual I am today and you know to come back here and look at it after so many years is just crazy it looks exactly the same in the hood you got kid in the hood damn they're the only the only nigga running the block around all my native folks and shit yeah I was like damn what up nigga and it was real from there nigga from playing ball to sleeping at each other's house to this this complex right here I want to bring you guys to is because there's a significance to it. The significance of this whole thing right here is this, this place, this little bedroom up there, this little building. This is where CTL Records was created. Well, growing up, my influences in mu music were mainly hip hop and uh, I guess a little bit of reggae because that's all that was played in my household. That's all my mother listened to. And uh, I first fell in love with music, I would say, probably right from when I was like probably five years old, six years old. But I first fell in love with making music, I would say, when I was. 12 years old, 11, 12 years old. I played baseball for the first time right here. Before all these houses were here, there used to be a field here. And I played baseball for the first time. And I remember I hit a home run and they uh, <laughs> they told me to run home. And I literally ran from there to home. 
And then they were like, no, no, not home to the home plate. So I ran back and I still made home. And yeah, it's crazy, man, to come back here. and just. I first around. made my first song when I was about, I'd say 12 years old, me and, uh, me and my best friend, uh, LJ. You guys probably know him as LJ Montana. We were probably 12 years old and we were at his place and uh, he had this, he had some kind of program on his computer and uh, we would just put uh, any little instrumental, I think it might have been like a Snoop Dogg or a Tupac instrumental or something, and we were just being stupid, being young, freestyling about the girls in our junior high or elementary at the time and that was the first time I made my first song and that's the first time I fell in love with actually creating music and making music. This right here is what keeps me humble. I always, you know, I gotta come back and just, just don't forget where you come from, pretty much. I give a lot of thanks to my homie Sauce because we came up in a rough place, this area, and you know, he, at the time I was a little bit younger, he was, he's a little older than me, and you know, we were, we were running around the streets, but it was mostly him who took, who took his money and invested his money into getting all this studio equipment and all this, all this stuff. So, yeah, man, we, we turned a little, a little hallway um, linen closet into a, a studio. We phoned it out into a booth. We phoned it out, and that's why, that's why I did most of my recording for the beginning of my career, man. And yeah. Every day, going to his house, recording. He'd be damn sleeping on his bed. I'd be throwing rocks at his window, like, yo, what are you doing? And he'd get up, come open the door, he'd go back to sleep, and I would stay in his room for like four hours just by myself recording while he's sleeping. And yeah, man, just good times. That's like uh, really times I really miss. We started recording my mom's basement, essentially. Um, Picked up a computer, a mic, whatever we could get our hands on, and, and just started recording from there. Um, and then it blossoms into, you know, you get to know studios and book recording time, and, and friends have other studio spaces and things like that that would, you know, that would be kind enough to let us not just rent the space, but like who, who believed essentially in what we were doing. At the time I would just lie to the teacher and be like, yeah, I have a spare and I would just literally just be recording all day and he, I don't know if he was stupid or he thought I had spares every damn class, but I was literally back there with a couple of my friends and we were literally recording all day. And uh, yeah, back then we didn't, we didn't have our own beats or anything. So again, I was just went back to recording on instrumentals, other people's beats and things like that. And uh, Around that time is when when Boogie Boogie started creating creating and uh, started producing beats, and that's when we started really focusing and um, taking it serious. He was a good kid. It's just things that maybe the people, some people he hang, hung out with, weren't very good for him, and I tried to tell him that but I also taught him to speak his mind. You know, like if he thought something was wrong, speak your mind, don't let anybody bring you down. And I used to tell him whatever makes, whatever go, you go through only makes you stronger. So just speak your mind, you know. Come like around the time I was doing 10 times 10, I was still, I was still in the streets and I was still doing music at the same time, so I was kind of 50-50, right? It wasn't 100% music or it wasn't 100% streets. For a long time in my life, it was always 50-50. I was always chasing my dream or I was doing my music. But a big turning point for me in my life is in 2000, 2009, just before 2010, before I dropped 10 times 10, I, I caught a, a, a gun charge. I was kind of disappointed because I had raised him to be better than the streets, you know what I mean? Like I wanted him to, to make something of himself, but not to be on the street to make whatever they do on the street. And I really didn't know what was going on. Like I said, the head of the snake, the system got the head of the snake. So now that shit kind of like, it pretty much jammed us up in that sense. 
But then at the same time, it was like, yo, it's time to regroup. Let's figure this shit out. And even though we tried to figure it out, my nigga Ken already had the buzz and had the, 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 the fan base, the support system. So trying to get to his level, when we was a couple levels down, that shit is what really slowed us down. So after a while, it was, it damn near felt impossible. I was like, damn, like niggas ain't really fucking with us like that. Well, I would literally have to be home at 6 p.m. So what, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna sit at home and do nothing? No, I was just sitting at home making music. So that's when 10 times 10 was released. I was still on curfew at the time. And that's when I think the Streets FM just started. So they started playing local music. And, and then my music was being played on the radio. And then a lot of people were noticing that. And then a lot of people were noticing me everywhere I go and wanting to take pictures with me and you know, Yeah, pretty much. I was like a local celebrity, so to speak. Run my hometown, <laughs> I stood by him through all his court dates. I was there every day. I was there every court date he had, right there by his, by his side. You know, so yeah, it was hard. It was hard without the father figure in there. And uh, I believe that had a lot to do with the way he turned out. Maybe if his father had been around, he might not have gotten into trouble. I burst out crying, honest to God, in court. I was so angry because I felt like my son got railroaded. So I'm thinking, what's going to happen to my kids? My daughter, she's she's three years old, you know, my unborn son. And it was it, it was uh, it was a hard fate to accept because I wouldn't be there for my kids for a long time. And my daughter is so used to me being around, and I just didn't didn't want her to think that it was my choice to not be there for her or to leave her, you know what I mean? I just wanted to be there for my son. It was my first son and that's, I didn't get to experience holding my son as a newborn. I didn't get to, I didn't get that bond with my son that a man should have with, with his son. I didn't, I didn't get to experience that and that ate me up more than anything in this world and it still eats me up to this day. So that day, I burst out crying in court, honest to God. It broke my heart to see them take my child from the courtroom, you know what I mean? So it was heartbreaking, very heartbreaking for me. In order for me to keep sane and keep a clear head, I would, I would look at pictures of my kids and I would look at pictures of my family. Every Sunday I was there like clockwork, didn't fail, just like I was with him in court. I was in court with him every time he went, right from the first charge to whatever else came after, I was there. That I'm not in there forever. Like, I'm, I'm surrounded by people who are not going home. I'm surrounded by guys who are doing life, life bids. Like, I'm, I'm, I had the benefit of going home, so I just sat, I would look at my pictures of my kids, I would look at my family and just knowing it's not forever, and that's what just kept me pushing. And I, and I always will be there. You know, um, life has taught me many lessons on my journey, man, from the hardships I've been through, the adversity I've been through, the ups and downs. I realized that it was time for me to make a change so I could be the best me I could possibly be, not only for me, but for my family. I was being liberated from my past, and it was time to start fresh and myself. He's been at it just as long as I have, you know, and he's been grinding just as long as I have, right? Sure, he went away for a couple times, but it's like every time he gets back out, it's like right back at it, you know, like he never left. So. And I feel most of the time 
he does carry the city on his back, you know, everyone recognizes YK, they, they hear his voice, you know, like, wh when's the new stuff coming out, when's, when's the album coming out, you know, and I'm just glad to, you know, have been a part of, part of this journey and ready to move forward. Married to the game by that loyalty, I'm monogamous. Surprised I ain't the same, let this game, I've been on top of it. Hit rock bottom, I was on my last lifeline. Fought to make it up and shoot. Let's to make some noise for my documentary. You put a little pebble on the fucking map. When I say what, y'all say K. What? K. What? K. When I say CT, y'all say L. CT. L. CT. L. When I say ten times, y'all say ten. Ten times? Ten. Ten times? Ten. When I say ten times, y'all say ten. Ten times? Ten. Ten times? Ten. I fucking love y'all. Always stay focused. If you got a plan or you got a dream or something you want to do in your life, chase it 100%. Don't let anybody ever tell you you can't do it. Don't let anybody ever take your focus off your dream, ever. Because all you have is your dream. If you don't have a dream or you don't have a goal, th then you're nothing. And that's straight hands down facts. They don't know, they don't know what I've been through. All my life, there's some things I can't get in. Yeah, see, what I'm saying though is I wanted to tell like this, the whole story. Yeah, yeah, but that's, that's such a big thing too. Yeah, we dissect it. Yeah, we just have like a. Get into 